Hey, I'm your Korean dad. I'm so glad you're here for my new YouTube channel. I'm working with some folks to bring you a few different kinds of videos. Some are gonna be about food, some will be about an activity, you know, going out and doing something somewhere. And some, like today's, are gonna be chats. I have a special guest today, author and illustrator Liz Climo, that we're gonna go and meet in a minute. But you know, I think you're just as important and just as interesting a person as any guest I might have a chance to meet. So let's join in. I want you to be a guest as well. So let's go meet up with Liz Climo, and we can also meet up with some of you, okay? Great, let's go. Hey, I am your Korean dad. I'm here with Liz Climo, author and illustrator. Hi. Liz, thanks so much for being my first guest on the YouTube show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. We've been getting to know each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you just came out with your newest book. Can you talk about it a little bit? So my newest book is called your dad. So it's basically like my comic compilations that have come before, but the difference is it's sort of centered more on dads, but not just dads, just sort of like parenting in general. It's a very sort of hopefully touching and light read, and it's just a nice sort of like pick me up for anyone who you feel needs to be sort of like, you know, thanks for doing a good job as a parent, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. It's, it's really such a great book. I encourage everyone to go check it out, buy, buy a copy, give it as a gift if you want, or just save it for yourself. Your artwork is out there. It's like, it shows up in my Twitter feed. It's like very often almost like memes. So you were an animator on The Simpsons for mm -hmm. many years. Yeah. Like, how did you get started in that? So I was actually, you know, I always drew when I was younger and I, you know, I loved The Simpsons. So I would like sit in front of the TV and just practice drawing the characters. Um, so it's sort of an argument for it's like not too much screen time, but like if you are, you know, doing too much screen time, maybe pick up a pencil and draw the characters because yeah. it helped me get a job. So I was already a huge fan of the show and knew I wanted to do something within animation or illustration, just drawing basically. I knew I wanted to draw for a living if I could. So I was actually going to San Jose State working towards a BFA in animation and illustration. Unfortunately, I was rejected when I submitted my portfolio. And that was really sad. It was, and it was tough because I had been taking art classes up until that point, and the, the rules were at the time anyway that you couldn't take any of the classes like within you know the, the major unless you were in it. And I had already taken every all the prerequisites. So I was like, what do I do? <laughs> what classes do I take? Yeah. So in the interim, I was like, well, I have to do something. And so I applied for a job on The Simpsons um, because a friend, uh, like a family friend, knew they were hiring. He was working there too. And so I gave it a shot. And within like a two week period, I was rejected from this, this school's animation program. And then I got a job on this really popular show. And um, it was very Amazing. exciting and terrifying because I didn't actually know what to do. <laughs> I didn't know how to do the job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a heck of a leap. It was a big leap, yeah. People talk about things like imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I do feel like it's one of those things that people, when they share that, it, it is sort of confessing to a certain degree of insecurity or feeling inadequate or ultimately feeling like there's something that I need to be good at that I'm not good at yet. And if people find out that I'm going to be in big trouble kind of thing. Uh huh. <laughs> I mean, I, I got to imagine that animation job with The Simpsons, like when you first started out at least, like big time. Like, what did it take for you to get over that? Like, at least in that job? Because we don't, we don't hear that yeah. completely. I know, I was going to say any day now. <laughs> I think starting my, doing my comics and more of my own work and realizing at, you know, just maturing in general, because I was only 23 when I got that job. Mm -hmm. And I think I was working there for about seven or eight years, seven or eight years before I started posting my own comics and doing more of my own work. Becoming more comfortable with my own work and my own drawings and, you know, having some success definitely helped, but also just like pushing through the sort of like fear of, and like just disgust of seeing what I'm doing and just being like, <laughs> it's true though, because it was like, I, my, all my drawings are too cartoony and they're not like this person's drawings and this person's, you know, they know what they're doing, but I don't know what I'm doing. I just had to sort of keep moving through that and then eventually realize like, you know what, that, that this is who I am and I like who I am and you know, it's okay if I'm not that person or that person or that person. So yeah. it, it took some time, but it, you know, I'd say like, towards my like eighth or ninth year there, I started to really feel like I belong here. Uh -huh. And so more confidence came there. We want to hear from folks who are watching now. Have you ever felt like there's a risk that you need to take or that you did take? And how did it go just in terms of a thing that you needed to grow in? Is there a job or even in school where uh, a, a situation where you had something to do and you didn't feel like you totally 
knew how to do it, you didn't necessarily feel like you were fully equipped. Yeah, I wanna know how it went. Like, was it hard? Did it not go well? Did it go well? Like, let's share. Let's hear from folks a yeah. little bit. Hello? Hello. Have you been listening to our conversation? I have, yes. I feel inadequate at school all the time because I'm also an art student, but never feel like I truly fit in there because I feel like I don't think the way my professors want me to think. Hmm. They always say, okay, what's the deeper meaning behind this work? And I don't think about that. I cannot comprehend that. I just think, well, I don't know. What was the artist's intention? And they say, no, like, what do you feel about this painting? <laughs> I feel nothing. Abstract art is my nemesis because I feel nothing when I look at it. <laughs> I don't know, for the last three years, I've just felt like I've been in the wrong field. And it actually wasn't until a drawing class I took this past semester where it was more like a boot camp where our prof was trying to improve our skills rather than have us sit there and analyze art mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I actually felt like I was in the right field. I can definitely relate to everything you just said. Thank you so much for sharing. It's good yeah. to see you again. Good to see you too. Nice yeah. to meet you. Hello. How are you? Hi, what's your name? Jordan. Are there any experiences that you've had where you had to do, take a risk and do something new or something big or something that felt big? And at first, maybe you didn't feel like you were totally equipped. Recently switched from being a classroom teacher to an instructional designer. I was teaching for about 10 years. And once you get stuck in a job or, or in a role, it's tough to make that transition. I knew I wanted to do something differently and I just studied and grinded and, and didn't know if I was gonna be able to make that shift happen. Uh, Cause I'm a single dad too. And it's a risk involved in like, you know, jump into another career. Sure. but. I did it. I've been in the role for about a year and a half now and, and love it. Or the things that you felt like you, you didn't have going for you that you weren't equipped with. I didn't know what the industry was like on the other side. And, you know, I was unsure exactly what skills that I would need and if the skills that I did have were transferable. But some of the pro programs and platforms were a little bit overwhelming. And, and there were there's actually like a lot involved in terms of like understanding UX design and different theories. And that was new to me. It's not anything I studied. You know, I was I'm sure if I was actually going to be proficient at it or good at it. And yeah. so you know, there's always hesitation there, I think, before you start something new. But I love it and it's going well and haven't looked back. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, what's your name? I'm CJ. Hi, CJ. Has there been a time for you where you had to take a risk, like do something new that felt kind of big and a little bit scary? But then after you started doing it or after you did it, you realized like, oh, this is actually something that I kind of already knew how to do and just built on the stuff that you already already experienced. Um, honestly, high school. It is like the biggest jump between middle school to high school. Going into grade 10, I was probably the most nervous. I felt almost absolutely worthless. Oh. And I wasn't very good at school. I had very little confidence in myself. But then I realized that if you just relax, you're not as, you know, it's not as bad as it is. Yeah. There's people there to help you. And I think like school can feel almost like you're entering this like jungle of like this scary kind of place with wild beasts and whatever. But you know, it, it is a thing that a lot of people get through, right? And then all of a sudden you realize like, oh, they don't know everything about what they're doing, but they kind of understand like how to like take care of people and get them through the system. Yeah, I've met a, a handful of some fantastic teachers that have always been there to encourage me and tell me that like, specifically in my art class, which I will be going to in university, mm -hmm. I felt that I didn't make the same art as other people. So therefore my art was worth, worth less and it wasn't as good and that you know art really just is what you create and how you want to express things i think what you're explaining is something that every most if not all artists go through and you know when you're in school like part of school and i empathize with the teachers it's like they're trying to teach you to do one certain thing and some people can do that one certain thing and be really good at it and other people have their own path to go down and like for me personally like it I didn't really fit in that niche and so I kind of like went this way. 
other people went this way. And you just kind of have to kind of go your own path and it ends up, you know, hopefully working out and kind of stay true to yourself, I guess. And thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Take care, CJ. Good luck. Well, that was really fun getting to talk to other folks. Yeah. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I'm. Thank you so much for having me. This has been really fun. This is like one of the first things I've done after being vaccinated and like being yeah. out in the world. And like, it's fun just being inside of a place safely. And so, yeah. I'm so glad to spend time with you and get to see you in real life. I like know, this. this is great. Yeah, and share a coffee. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Take care. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.